welcome back to my podcast. This is the Cat Crafting It's podcast and thank you for watching. I'm back, I'm doing a second episode. I think I'm a little bit more put together this time. Like, for the first episode I knew that I was going to film it for weeks because I'd planned to film it. But the actual day and the time that I decided to do it was quite spur of the moment, as you could probably tell. But yeah, we're a little bit more organised. I've done my makeup and my hair. Now, I would say that that was especially for the podcast, but I'd be lying if I did. The reason I did it, and I'm looking outside and pausing there because the idea was that I'm wearing my over the ocean adult jumper, which I would have talked about last time. The plan is to go out. My husband said he'd help me, he's going to help me with photography, which I might actually regret because often it ends up becoming awkward, and then I just stand there like, and the pictures are really awful. He's going to help me with photography and we're going to finally photograph my over the ocean adult sample. That means I have then no excuse but to finish the pattern, hopefully this week, if not this week then beginning of next week, and get it off to the tech editor so I can finally get this one in motion. <laughs> um, if you are interested in this pattern it is definitely coming really really soon. Um, if you would like to test it for me, that would be fantastic. I am always particularly after plus size testers because they are the most difficult people to try and encourage to knit. I'm going to have a really long test period on this one. I'm thinking probably at least, at least probably three months or close to three months because I appreciate that great things take time. Am I allowed to say it's great? I think it's great, but. <laughs> that aside, the slip stitches do take a little while, so it's not a completely just stock in, stock in that, make your way through the pattern, spin it off really, really quick. It does take a little bit more time than that. It's, it's still quite fairly speedy when you get into the swing of it, but yeah, it does take a little bit longer than just a plain stock in, stock in it stitch jump at wood, so I think it's only fair to give a decent time, and also... I can't be bothered with the stress of it being all tight tight deadlines, so why would I expect you guys to be? I've been working on this thing for years. I don't want the test to take years, because you all won't bother doing it, but, you know, <laughs> you get my drift. As you can see, I am in a different location than last time. I mean, I'm in a different location, I'm still in the same room. I was sat over there last time in front of my fire, whereas this time I'm sat in the corner with the window, my spinning wheel and my old clock. I thought I'd try over here this time because, I don't know, it was a bit boring looking at my fireplace wasn't it, whereas at least there's a little bit more going on here. I have pulled the curtain to, to hopefully deal with some of the lighting that we might have problems with. But yeah, it's a bit brighter. This is affectionately known as my knitting windowsill. If you followed me for a while, you'd have seen references to my knitting windowsill. And that's basically because that's where I dump all my stuff when I'm knitting. All the stuff I've got on the go. I pulled the curtain a bit today so you can't see the full extent of all the rubbish that's up there. Not because I'm wanting to hide the rubbish but mainly to try and limit the amount of light as I've got the window directly behind me and how it might affect the video. And I've conveniently piled all my stuff up that I'm going to talk about on the radiator. So yeah, apologies if you have to look at the radiator but it's somewhat useful. So yeah, I have also upgraded my camera, as in last time I just randomly did it on my phone, which actually turned out to be a bit of a rubbish idea, whereas now you're on the proper Canon camera. So let's see if that makes a difference. I don't know what the sound's going to be like, but we'll see. It's actually not been a super crafty last few weeks. Um, as you've seen from the first couple of videos that I showed, we were on holiday last week. Well. My husband was in Germany with work, so I went on holiday with the kids and my parents, which was really lovely. It rained the whole week. We only went to Cornwall, so only a couple of hours away from here. And it rained most of the week. It was pretty rubbish, but we still had a good time. Before we went on holiday, my son and myself were really quite poorly, and we were quite poorly for a couple of weeks. So I didn't really get an awful lot done then either. Poor Oscar, he basically slept through his entire fourth birthday because he was so tired. Which is a bit of a shame, bless him. But he's all good now, he's back at nursery. I feel a little bit better. And yeah, let's get on with it, shall we? The dog's outside barking, so I better go let him in because it's raining. 
I've got a few things to talk about today, not nearly as much as last time though, you'll be thankful to know. First of all, I've got a new cast on which is also a finished object. I've got a couple of other cast ons and a hoe, a half finished object. I don't know why they call it hoe. Because it, is it a half object? Because actually it's not a half object, because it's a whole single object. I just need to make the set, it's a sock, I need to make the second sock. So it's not really a half because it's whole in itself. But the whole project is half. Maybe that project, sorry, is half. Maybe that's why. Anyway, who am I to say? So yes, I'll show you that. And then there's a little bit of progress to show on my shawl that I was designing, which I'll show you. Oh, and then the last thing I'm going to talk about. So we're all a bit sock heavy this week or this episode. And part of that is because I have a new sock design release coming at the end of this week. My photos of my project for my patterns if it's a sock, I edit out my tattoo. And I was just going to talk a little bit why I do that, but that will come later. Anyway, so shall we start with the finished object, which is then the pattern release. So, last week, or last episode, I would have shown you the speckle pop socks. So this is the ones that you would have seen. These are knit from Ottoman Papoose yarns in her dandelion sock set colour colourway. And they're really fun. But there is now a second pair. This one. You've got beady eyes there. You may have seen that this cuff is shaped slightly differently to the first. Is that showing up? Hopefully that's showing up. So, I think I mentioned in my last episode what was really important to me with this sock design was not only to create something that was really quite dainty and delicate and pretty for summer, best as possible, would not slip down into your shoes or over your heel when you're wearing them. One of my biggest bugbears with particularly knitted shorty socks, but I don't like it when the cuff slips down the back of your heel and into your sock or into your shoe. It really annoys me. So I wanted to try and create something that wasn't going to allow that to happen. Hence, on this one, the double folded cuff, which gives it a little bit more structure around that area to help it not slip. It, it very much went down well in testing. I did have to make a couple of tweaks to where the picot edge comes just because some people were finding that it wasn't sitting quite like they wanted to so I had to play with that but whilst doing so I had an idea that creating more space in the back of the folded cuff would further help that sock not slip down so in making those alterations I also came up with an alternative cuff which was the shaped back and this does a really super job at just keeping that sock up, up the ankle. And I'm so incredibly pleased. The reason I didn't do the contrast heel in this one is because when I did this pair, I had such little yarn left for my mini that I was worried that the few extra rows in the ankle there, or in the back of the ankle for the cuff, would tip me over and me not actually have any left. As it turns out, I did have a little bit left and I probably would have been fine. But you know, who knows? That's the way it goes. I still really like it though. Actually, I quite like the fact that it's slightly different from the first one. In that sense. So yeah, that is my Speckle Pop Socks. So, this pattern will be available from the 19th of April. So Friday the 19th of April. For you to get, and it will come. The pattern comes with both options for the cuff so the straight cuff or the cuff that's shaped at the back. Um, the cuff is shaped using German short rows. If you fancy getting your hands on that, I thought it might be nice to give you guys a little bit of a bumper discount. I always do an intro dis discount on my patterns, and if you're a subscriber to my newsletter, which of course do, I'll put the link below, that'd be great. It'd be lovely to have you. I always give my newsletter subscribers a bit of a bumper discount 
but I thought I'd maybe share that with you YouTube watchers as well this time just because I'm new at this and actually it'd be quite cool for me to see oh that was a YouTube subscriber that bought the pattern there thank you so yeah if you'd like to buy the pattern um, grab yourself 40% off by using the code YouTube speckle pop socks so YouTube speckle pop socks and yeah that will get you 40% off that will be valid on either Ravelry or on my website. My website is powered by Payhip. Um, so it will work on Ravelry or Payhip. And I'll put that those links down below as well so you don't have to go searching for them. And yeah, that's those. So, talking about other cast-ons and whips. I ended up having a bit of a sock cast on frenzy, mainly because of this shaped cuff. Because when I tried it the first time, I didn't get the short rows quite in the right place and they showed a little bit more, I'll show you in a second, than I would like. So obviously I then needed to cast on a couple more to make sure I was getting it right, didn't I? So yeah, this is mainly what I was working on over the time when I was pouring. So this was the one that I tried first, and as you can see, this is my home. This is my half object. So this is the shaped cuff on this one. There. And I don't know if this is going to show up on camera because, yeah. But as you can see here, there's just a little bit of a pinch where the short row shows. Oh, and it's even more obvious on that side, if you can see that. I don't know if this is focusing properly. properly. This is the first time I've used this camera in this way. Is that, is that it? I'm not. I've also just noticed that I'm looking at the viewfinder that's just slightly off the side. And you're there, so it might look like I'm looking away from the camera all the time. So I really apologise if that's the case. I'll try really hard to look at the actual lens. So yeah, this was my first attempt at that. This isn't really planned to be anything in terms of it's not a pattern that I followed, it's not a pattern that I, I'm going to release particularly, it's just a sock that I knit because I wanted another shorty sock and I wanted to try that cuff. So it's got a standard slip stitch heel, as you can see there, and the only other thing I've done to make this not a completely vanilla sock is I added some slip stitch to the front of the sock to make it kind of like a sport sock. And yeah, when I wasn't happy with this one, of course, I needed to try it again. And my husband's a real fan of one knitted socks, but two shorty socks. And he wears other shorty socks I've worn. I've um, knit him in the past a lot, certainly over the summer. So I thought I'd do him one as well. And this is as far as I got. So you can see, not very far yet. And this one even to the point where I haven't actually where is it, which way does it go that way folded the, or secured the fold for the cuff yet so yeah, you can see there, is it there? yeah where, that is where the extra space is created at the back of the hill, you can see where those stripes and actually it worked really well, this is a West Yorkshire Spinners yarn um, in the colourway pheasant I think it's pheasant and as it happened the stripes worked perfectly I've given just a tiny stripe at the front where the extra space is added at the back but more or less a full stripe per set of short rows at the back so yeah I was quite pleased with that so yeah that was my socks and that's kind of it for my in progresses in terms of what I'm kind of actively working on new stuff now let's just kind of talk about the stuff that I showed you last week really. First of all is my shawl, this is the Laneland shawl that is currently in progress and as you can see I've made quite a lot of progress on this. In fact let's show it that way because that's the way it will fall as you wear. So yeah I'm really pleased with how that is coming together. I should have given it a quick steam block before showing but I haven't done so yeah that will all sit much flatter when 
it's all stained. But you may be wondering what this long bit here is. It looks a little bit strange at this point, doesn't it? And let me just show you quickly. Can I do this on camera nicely? The idea for this shot was... I can't do the camera. That may be due. Oh, dropping the ball. That the shawl will have this knot at the bottom, which will intermingle the colours of the yarns. And then the body of the shawl will then grow from the knot. I'm really pleased with that. This is a funny project because I have spent months and months perfecting this bit. The bit where all the increases are worked in with the lace pattern. So this bit, the bit that's tied and you can't even see. In fact, I'm showing you the back. That's even better, isn't it? This bit here, where the bit that's tied, so you can't even see it anyway. But I've spent months perfecting how this increases to get to this point. And that's what's taken all of the time. But now I'm on this bit. It's just repeating the same pattern here same pattern here and then increasing on the garter stitch in the middle so now it's just quite mindless like I've memorized my lace pattern for either side which is the same it's just reversed I've memorized it and shoom, it just goes like I can sit there and not really pay attention and all of a sudden I've added a few more uh, leaf repeats so this will look really cool, and this is probably going to take a little while now because I want this to be quite sizeable before then the decrease goes back the opposite direction to then return. And I think I spoke about this last time where ideally I'd like to mimic this section, the increase section, with the decrease as the opposite side of the shawl as much as possible. I don't think it's going to be possible in its entirety, but I'm going to have a really good go. So. I'm going to enjoy this mindless bit for now because this bit back down again the other side is going to be challenging. So yeah, happy with the progress on that. That's really cool. So, the last thing to talk about that I mentioned was the tattoo picture sock thing. So this is a bit of a funny thing to talk about and it's one of those things that I'm always acutely aware of when I post like videos or I say videos, I've done one reel of, that shows my ankle with my tattoo in it. Um, but when I do my photos for Instagram or for my pattern releases or my pattern photos, um, I always edit out my tattoo. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Actually, it's not even that interesting. You might find it a little bit interesting. But yeah, first and foremost, particularly for the ankle socks, I don't want my tattoo to detract from what I'm showing you, which is the sock. It's not about my leg, it's about my, or my ankle, it's about my sock. So that's what I want you guys to see. So yes, I do Photoshop out my tattoo for that reason, and that's the main reason. Um, if I haven't said it already, I will input a video and a picture of my tattoo. I have two, although technically I class it as one. The first one I got back before children, which was um, a little one that goes down the back of my calf to my ankle with a picture of a doe and the words always on it. So you might already guess if you're in, if you're in that realm where I'm going with this. But yeah, so that was the first one I got. And then shortly after Pippa was born, I got a second one, which is wings that wrap around the front of my foot. And then some decorative, and there's probably a word for it in tattoo, tattoo world, but I don't know what it is, but it looks pretty. And part of those wings, well, it makes up a snitch. So again, you kind of see where I'm going with this if you're Harry Potter fans. Um... Yes, it's a Harry Potter tattoo. So the first one's a Harry Potter tattoo and it moves into the second one, which is a Harry Potter tattoo also. I grew up loving Harry Potter. I read all the books as a kid. I've watched all the films. I've listened to the audio books with Stephen Fry reading them for years and years and years. And it's been a big part of my childhood and my growing up and even into my adult life. So 
when I got these tattoos, I really enjoyed them. I don't regret getting them either. I don't think I'll ever regret it because I really, really like them. However, with the controversy around JK Rowling that has been topic of conversation for a little while now, after I got my tattoos, this all happened, the controversy with JK. I don't want to show that to the world if it is something that is triggering for people. And I don't condone any of JK Rowling's attitudes or statements that she's made over the last few years in regards to... I'm not going to go into it, you know what this is about. If you don't, then you can Google it and you'll know. Um, I, I don't want to support any of her feelings regarding any of that. It's not something that I want to engage in. I want to be seen as an ally to trans people and everyone else that she's offended over the years. I don't support any of her views in the slightest. And actually, I don't know if you'll agree with me or not, but if you don't know what the tattoo's about, I think it just looks pretty, and I like it. Um, but that's why I edit it out of my videos, or my pictures. And I think that's okay. First and foremost, because it's actually not the subject of my photo, it's the socks that are the subjects of my photos. So I think that is a valid reason, but it's also an important reason for, to not highlight that it, it's there, I think. I kind of waffled through that, and I hope that I've made that point succinctly as possible. Would I... Do I regret getting the tattoo? I think I've already said this. No, I don't regret getting it, because it's part of me, and I really like it, and I think it's pretty. Would I have got it after all of the controversy with JK Rowling? Absolutely not. I'm also not a super tattoo person. Like, I really like the one that I've got, and I'm glad I've got it. But I'm not going to be go getting a sleeve anytime soon. Um, I probably will never get another tattoo again. And, yeah, that's why I edit it out of my photos. <laughs> oh, that was a little bit awkward. Let's take a drink. I don't have a tea or a coffee today, I literally just have water. Because mainly, I did a bit of prep for this video before filming and that's when I drank my coffee. And I didn't really fancy another one to then record. And I already need a wee, so I didn't need any more fuel for that wee. And I think that brings us to the end. And that's all I'm going to talk about today. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. A little bit more palatable this time, a little bit more interesting, a little less an hour long. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the shorts one a little bit better anyway. Um, yeah. Thank you for being here. Don't forget the discount code if you'd like it for my stock pattern that comes out. And I will see you next time. If you have enjoyed my video, I'm rambling because I don't really know how to close this out. Oh, thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please like, comment and subscribe. It would be lovely to have you back again. Ooh, wait my hair. Um, and, yeah, follow me on the socials. The main one that I am active on and the one that I always talk about is Instagram. My handle is catcraftiness. And, I don't know when I'm going to podcast again. I certainly hope to be doing it again within the next week few weeks a month I certainly don't have kind of like a schedule of how regular I want to do them yet a lot of it's just going to depend on what I've got to show you what I've got to talk about and yeah there's no as you can already tell because I'm already rounding the video out there's no patterns that tempt me this week the main reason for that is because I've been on holiday I've been poorly I've not really actually been that active in the knitting world in the last few weeks so I haven't come across any patterns particularly that have tempted me to cast on but yeah I still I'm toying with the ones that I talked about last week if you haven't seen what I was talking about last week then please go back and watch <laughs> and yeah I am waffling and I'm going to run out of space on the camera in a second so thank you and goodbye <laughs>